All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Athenian Stranger tutorial video where today we will be looking at a problem where we have to find a missing endpoint. Okay, so we've been looking at finding a missing midpoint, but now we're going to look at a problem where the midpoint is given and one of the coordinates of the segment is given, one of the endpoints, but we have to find the other one. So let's let's get into this and see how to figure it out. Before I start, and I should have said this in the last video, if you aren't already, I want you to pause this video and write all of this down in your math journals. I want you to write it just like I've got it written it here, uh, written here, very clearly and neatly. Take a protractor or a ruler and draw yourself an extremely neat graph where the distance between the points is the same everywhere. That's why I use a ruler. I'll show you what I did here. Every quarter of an inch, I put a point, okay? And I did the same thing on the x-axis that I did on the y-axis. Every quarter of an inch, there's a point. All right, you could use graph paper, but it's a good skill to just be able to create a little quick graph. And that's what we did here. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've written all this down, and now we're going to do the problem. Find the endpoint coordinates of point A if the coordinates of point M, which is the midpoint, are negative 1, 2, okay, is the midpoint of line segment AB, and B has coordinates of 3, negative 5. Okay, so what are we given? We have a line segment called AB. We need to find where it starts at point A. We don't know what that is, but we know what the midpoint is, and we know what the other endpoint is. We know where B is. So let's plot what we know and see what to do next. So first I'm going to plot point M, and that's at negative 1, 2. So over here on the x-axis, I go to the left 1 to negative 1, and then I go up to 2. So in this case, I want to be super certain I'm getting this all lined up. Notice how I'm using this guide mark on the protractor to line it up with, beneath the transparent plastic, line it up with the vertical axis. Now I'm right there. I want to go up to 2 and put a dot. And I want to be very precise about where I'm putting a dot. And that point right there is going to be point M. Make sure you label your points. All right. And now we're going to plot point B at 3, negative 5. So I move over 3 on the x-axis and go down to negative 5 on the y-axis. So now I'm going to try to make, make sure that I've got my, I don't want my protractor to be off kilter. So I'll keep it very parallel with this x-axis uh, at negative 5 on the y, move over to 3, negative 5, right there. Okay, so you see I'm trying to keep it lined up. Okay, so let's make that point bigger, and then we'll call this point B. Now, here's the thing. This is the midpoint of a line segment. So... Here's the thing. Let me take a, well, I guess I'll use this blue pen. Do I not have a red? Okay, I'll use this blue pen. Well, no, I want to erase it, so I'll use this pencil. Put your straight edge up against these points, all right? And I want you to do something for me. I want you to draw a line in pencil, or lightly, because you're going to erase it. It's just a guideline. You can't even see that. Yeah. Okay, so you use a pencil. I'll use something a little bit darker so it shows up. I'll put a dashed line here. I want to prove a point here. I want you to see where the path of this line is. Okay, 
You see that? This is the dashed line that we know that point A is going to lie somewhere here. We know that point M is the midpoint of this line segment. So now we just have to find the coordinates of the, of the other point. Okay? So let me show you how that's done. We need this information right here. We need to know that point M is at negative 1, 2. And so this is the X value and this is the Y value. And we also have these points right here. We have 3, comma, negative 5. This is the x value, and this is the y value. Okay? And so here's how you solve this problem. You have to do two little problems. First, you set up this problem where you have negative 1, which is the x-coordinate of the midpoint, equal to... Three plus x over two. And let me explain just how I came to that conclusion. Remember from the other problem that we did, if you haven't watched that, go back one in the video sequence and watch it. The midpoint formula said you take the two endpoints and you take the x coordinates and you average that distance and then you take the y-coordinates and you average that distance. So what I'm saying is this is the missing x-coordinate. So I, I put that x there to indicate that I need to find something. And I know that if I add 3 plus whatever that is and divide by 2, I'll get negative 1, which is the midpoint. It makes more sense when you do it a couple of times. So if you find this confusing, just follow along and you'll be fine. So now let's just deal with this problem. Even if you're not quite sure how we got here, you, you'll understand in, in, with practice. But let's solve this problem. So now notice that we've got two in the denominator, and we have more than one thing in the numerator. We have an expression in the numerator, 3 plus x over 2. So we can't, there's, we, have to, we have to make sure we're careful about what we're doing. In order to get rid of this 2, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by it. Okay, so right now, both 3 and x are being divided by 2. So to, to get rid of that 2, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, just like that. And let's simplify and reduce. So on the right side of the equation, I now have 2 over 2. So those cancel, okay? And on the left side of the equation, I have 2 times negative 1. Well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 is equal now to whatever is left on the right side of the equation. So we got rid of the 2s, leaving only the numerator, which is 3 plus x. So let's keep solving for x now. We have 3 over here. Let's subtract it from both sides. On the right side of the equation, 3 minus 3 is 0. On the left side of the equation, negative 2 minus 3, you've got two negative numbers. It's going to be more negative. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Put a negative sign in front of it. Negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. Negative 5 equals, make sure you bring down this x, x. All right? So let me write this more clearly. The x coordinate is equal to negative 5. Does that make sense? We'll do this one more time. We have to do it to find the y coordinate. But we now know something. Let me show you what we know. We know that the x-coordinate is located at negative 5. So this is negative 2, negative 3. I'm going to have to add a couple of points here. Negative 4 and negative 5. Okay. 
So this is going to be negative 5 and negative 4. So here's the good news. I have half of my problem solved. I know that my x coordinate lies somewhere on this line right here. Okay? I'm dotting this in just to show you what's going on. You don't have to do this. So I've kind of I'm I'm zeroing in. I now know that it's it's somewhere right there. Okay? You see where the the lines cross. Now I've got to find the y coordinate. So let's find the y coordinate. Let's see if I can split this page a little bit. Let's solve for the y coordinate right here. What is the y coordinate of the midpoint? Just look at the graph if you don't know. It's 2. Okay? 2. So 2 is the y coordinate of the midpoint. And that is equal to the y coordinate of endpoint B plus x divided by 2. So the y coordinate of endpoint B is negative 5. Negative 5 plus, I should say y, plus y divided by 2. Right there, okay? So now all we have to do is isolate y, and we've got our y coordinate of our end point. Okay? So we've got the same problem we had previously. We've got a 2 in the denominator, and so to get rid of it, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, this is going to be hard for me to write. Let me just stick this guy in here. He's multiplied by 2 as well. 2 times 2 is 4 on the left, and that's equal to, these 2's cancel out, and I'm left with negative 5 plus y. I want to pause here and make sure you know I'm putting these parentheses here so I know that I'm multiplying, right? It was a bit redundant for me to put the parentheses and then put a dot and then a 2. The parentheses indicate that I'm multiplying. Okay, So if that was confusing, that's, that's why I did that. All right, so now I'm down to the final step. I have negative 5 plus y equals 4. So I want to add 5 to both sides to get the variable by itself. On the right side, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So 9 equals y. Okay, so the y coordinate of the end point is 9. We now have everything we need. We know that our coordinates for point A are the x coordinates negative 5, and the y coordinate is 9. We'll just find that here on the graph and we'll be done. So here I need to extend my vertical axis, my y axis. 3, well this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's right. Okay. So this is this is nine right here, and now this is the y-axis, and so now I know that my endpoint lies on this plane. Okay. So I know that it's going to have a y value here. And look, look where the, the x dotted line and the y dotted line intersect. They intersect exactly where we expected them to, didn't they? Right here at point A. Okay, and point A has coordinates negative 5, comma, 9. Okay, 
negative 5, comma 9. And so now we know where this endpoint lies, so we can actually take a, a dark pen here and draw in the full segment from A to B. Okay, there's your segment. Okay, that was a little bit more challenging than the problems we've had before. It required you to use your graphing knowledge. It required you to think about what an endpoint and a midpoint represent in relation to one another and kind of manipulate that midpoint formula until you arrive at those coordinates, negative 5, 9, for missing endpoint A. If you found this video confusing, please go back, watch the previous two or three videos, and then try this again. As always, please like and subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell so you're always getting notified when a new video is posted. Thank you very much.